So I use these dynamic labels, and there's one here in this pivot chart. And when I change the selection in the pivot table, you'll see this label will update to reflect new information, as well as the chart, obviously. And all the dynamic label is is just a text string that updates based on the content of a cell or multiple cells, which we can see here in cell J4. And I've then linked that cell to, or linked my chart title to that cell, so we can see in the formula bar there is the reference to J4. So let's just rewind and I'll talk through how it all ties together. Here I've got in table one my raw data. My pivot table picks up that raw data in its range and that feeds through to my pivot chart. And then I've got this formula here that builds my text string. So we can see the first part of the formula has just some hard keyed text. And then I use the ampersand to join the text in cell H3 to that first part of the text. So you can see it reads total UK because cell H3 contains the word UK. And then the next part is some more text. And you'll notice that that text is in double quotes. And whenever we type text into a formula, we need to surround it with double quotes. The ampersand joins the last bit, which is our grand total figure. Now, I've got a couple of functions in there, and I'll just talk through those. So let's just build it again. So it's total. Oops. I'm using my Surface laptop thingy, and the keyboard is terrible, so bear with me. So total, I've put a space at the end of total because I want a space between total and the next word, which is the country code. And you'll notice that with referencing a cell, I don't need to surround that in double quotes because it's a cell reference. So then another ampersand, and we want a space. Oops, I know we don't want double quotes. And then a space, sales to date, and then another space. And we close our double quotes. And we use our ampersand again to join the grand total figure. Now, I'm going to just click on the cell in the pivot table that houses the grand total. And you see it automatically puts in the get pivot data function. Now, if you're like me, for years I hated that function. It was just so annoying because I didn't understand it. But I'm not going to teach it now. But if you don't know it and you use pivot tables, then do yourself a favor and go and master get pivot data because it's a great function. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to press enter, and you can see there that the number at the end is not formatted very nicely, and that's because the number formatting is actually just a cell format. We can see up in the formula bar that the number is just a value. It's an underlying value with no formatting. And when we put that in a text string, the Excel can't bring that formatting in on its own, and we can't just format it up in, you know, choose a formatting either. So one way around that is to wrap it in the text function. So all the text function does is convert a value or a number to a format, um, a text format that you can choose. So we're going to use the get pivot data function for our value argument. And for the format text, we have to enter this in double quotes. So we're going to format it as a dollar currency with a comma separator for the thousands. And then we close our double quotes and close the text function. Now, I'll explain a bit more about on where you find those characters for the text format in a moment. But now when I enter it, it's nicely formatted. And then I can link it to my chart. And I'll just turn the chart title off and on again so I can show you how to do it. All you need to do is select the title, just left click. While it's still active, and we can see it's active, it's got the dots all around it, click in the formula bar, enter the equal sign, then click on the cell that contains your label and press enter. And now it's all linked, so I can change my selection again, and it feeds through automatically. So you can use this in charts, but you could use it just in a, a regular cell. It doesn't have to be with charts. And obviously, if it was just in a regular cell, you could just format that a bit nicer and... Um, do whatever you like with it, really. You can't enter um, a formula directly in here. That's why we put it in a cell first and then link the chart title to the cell. 
Now, just quickly, a bit more on the text function. So, te oops, text, oh gosh, text even, is really simple. It's just a value, and that can be any cell, and then you put in your format. Now, where to find the formats? I go to oh, Control-1 to open my Format Cells dialog box. On the Number tab, go down to the Custom category, and you'll see these are the characters that you can use in your text function format argument. So just the first format before the first semicolon is what you would use. And you can just highlight it, Control-C to copy, and then go back to your formula and paste it in. You can't format in the text function, you can't specify a different format for the negative value. So in a, a custom number format, really quickly, we've got our positive value, then a semicolon separates the next format, which is the negative. And some of them will have four. So the third format would be four zero values, and then the fourth one for text. But in the text function, you just put in the one format, so we can copy that, go back to your function, highlight it, and control V to paste it in and it will format it accordingly. If that value was a negative, then it will put a minus sign before it, so that's all it does for, for negative values. So there you have dynamic labels in Excel, um, which are really handy for lots of things, lots of reports. That is, that is slick. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten uh, messed up on that on that text function. That is, uh, that's a slick trick. Yeah. Cool. yeah. That's a good one. Glad you liked it. I don't know how to switch my screen back, so I don't know if it has or not. No, you're uh, not. we can see you now. Yeah. You know, knowing that text function can help you. Yeah, it, it it can also be a space saver, so that you don't have, um, say you need three pieces of data. You know, you don't have to hog up three cells in three columns or three rows. And then you have problems filtering and sorting because you got all that stuff broken up. But by using the text function, yeah, you can keep things in one cell and still have the, uh, the integrity of your spreadsheet. Yeah, and you can use it for um, dates and time and all sorts of formats. So it just depends what the number is that you're wanting to format. You just choose the relevant um, formatting characters and yep. paste it in. It's easy. That's all right. Oh, I'm um, here. All right. Five for Roger bottles for all yeah. of that activity. <laughs> text. Yeah, give me data. That's good. You done whooped a lot on us. <laughs> so it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to go through. Almost fell over. All right. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you for that. That was some good stuff.